for this session, we will talk about the transaction cycles approach to audit. So under transaction cycles approach to audit, what we normally do is we try to segment the financial statements. So we have here your financial statements. We divide it into different segments. Normally, we do this because uh, there are recurring transactions within a cycle. There are recurring transactions within a cycle. So we try to segment it into different systems or subsystems. The subsystems are known as your different transaction cycles. So there are different transaction cycles. And for each transaction cycle, we will discuss how to audit it. So normally, we will look into the whole process of each transaction cycle. So when we say uh, each process of transaction cycle, we start first with uh, the different departments and the activities within that department, including any records within that department. Aside from that department, activities and records, we look into the possible internal controls in place. And then after it, internal controls in place, we will also talk about possible substantive tests. So we're still uh, within the context of um, testing now. Uh, testing now either our controls or we go to a substantive test approach. But uh, we will attack this particular topic by discussing both controls and the substantive test applicable to the particular process or particular cycle. But again, as I told you, we start first by knowing the cycle itself. After we know the cycle, we discuss the controls in place for that cycle and the possible substantive test in that particular cycle. So let's start. So what is a transaction, transaction cycle approach to audit? So whenever we see transaction cycle approach to audit, we now organize the audit process by segmenting the FS and accounting records via subsystems that correspond to the audit they are conducting. So the normal subsystems we have are the different cycles. And what are the normal cycles that we have? It is revenue and receipt cycle, expenditure and disbursement cycle, HR and payroll, production or conversion, financing and investing. But before we proceed to those items, let's uh, finish this particular definition. Though the cycle does not need to be industry-specific, it does have to be a system-specific. So when we say system-specific, it is only applicable to the system of a particular entity. So the normal systems or uh, cycles within that entity are the items we have earlier uh, discussed or earlier enumerated. So first, revenue receipt cycle. So for revenue receipt cycle, it is also known as order to cash. So first, revenue, that is the order, and receipt is the cash. So from an order, we convert it now to cash. So this is the whole process. So for that process, we just need to determine the different activities. We need to determine the different departments involved and what are the records involved. So let's look into the order to cash. Order to cash is composed of two items. First, sale of goods or services to customer, that is your revenue or the order. And then the second item is the collection of cash. That is now the receipt and or the cash. So later, when we go to your revenue receipt cycle, we will discuss the whole cycle from the selling of goods up to the collection of that particular sale and convert it to cash. Next, we have your expenditure and disbursement cycle. For expenditure and disbursement cycle, it is composed of first, the purchase, that is the expenditure, and then disbursement, that is now your pay. It's also known as P2P. So again, the whole process is from purchase, we will now pay our purchase. So when we discuss your expenditure and disbursement cycle, we will discuss again the different activities within that cycle, the departments involved, the records involved. So here, again, it is composed of two main activities. And what are those activities? First, the acquisition of goods and services, that is the expenditure or the purchase. Next, the payment for the goods and services acquired, that is the disbursement or pay.
Another cycle or another transaction cycle that we need to uh, talk about is your HRM payroll. So for HRM payroll, again, it is composed of two main activities. That is your acquisition and payment of for the services. It is also known as hire to retire. So for acquisition of services from employees, we call that your HR. And the payment for the services, we call that your payroll. Next, we have your production or conversion. That is plan to inventory. So production is your plan. Conversion is your inventory. So this applies only particularly to your manufacturing entities. Okay, It applies to manufacturing entities. So it is composed of production of entities, product for sale. So this is from raw materials up to finished goods inventory. Next, we have your financing and investing cycle. Unfortunately, we don't have other um, terms for it. Again, it is composed of two items. It is the generation of capital funds from outside investors. That is your financing. And then investment of capital funds to other profitable activities. We call this one your investing process. So for this particular session, we will only focus on four items. That is your revenue receipt, expenditure and disbursement, HR and payroll, financing and investing. Why? Because most entities have this one. While for production or conversion, it applies only to manufacturing. That's why we will not discuss the item for production or conversion. We will only focus ourselves into the four main cycles, R&R, P2P, HR and payroll, and financing and investing. So let's look into uh, the responsibilities as to our transaction cycle. So just like uh, any other topics that we have discussed, in every topic, we look into the responsibilities of both the management and the auditor. So what is the responsibility of the management and what is the responsibility of the auditor? So let's start first as to the management. Since um, transaction cycles, we will also discuss the different controls in place. So we will still discuss the different controls in place. So we will look if ever the management has placed some internal controls on those transaction cycles. And at the same time, whether uh, the management monitors those controls. So for the management, therefore, the main activity of the management here is to design and implement your controls for each transaction cycles to minimize, to minimize fraudulent activities. We said if we place internal control, at least we minimize either uh, fraud. We can minimize either fraud or error. However, we say at some point, your internal controls, if not working effectively, then it cannot really uh, uh, minimize or it cannot really detect those fraud or those Error. So whenever we say again controls, it is composed of your different control activities. If you still remember, your uh, control activities before is composed of copies, but now it is co called your tariffs. Okay, so your controls talks about your different control activities. And this control activities now is known as your tariffs. So I hope you still remember those uh, items. We have your physical control. Authorization, reconciliation, verification, and segregation. What is important under segregation is that we segregate custody, authorization, and then lastly, your recording. So that we can say that your controls are working effectively, there must be proper segregation of these three. Custody, authorization, or recording, or your CAR. Next. Another uh, responsibility of your management is to ensure that transactions are processed in reliable and consistent manner as possible. Uh, we said before that whenever we talk about your internal controls, it uh, it relates or it provides reasonable assurance to obtain the necessary objectives of the entity. And whenever we say objectives of the entity, that is your financial reporting objective. So what we want under your financial reporting objective is that through your internal control, it now provides for a reliable and consistent processing of the different information 
within that particular cycle. So we want that whenever the cycle is in place and the internal controls are in place in that particular transaction cycle, our financial reporting objective will be met. As long as the internal control provides reasonable assurance. So when we say reasonable assurance, again, the internal control must be working effectively. So what are the uh, common controls provided under your management? So whenever we see common controls, these are controls particularly to your custody, authorization, and recording. So first, initiating department approves the form. And the initiating department is accountable for all of the forms in their department. And then, if approved by the management, forwarding can be done also electronically. And the initiating department must retain a copy of the forms for filing. So here, there's approval. We call that one authorization. Accountable. And then lastly, retaining the copy. For accountable, uh, we call this one as your recording and retaining your copy is your custody. So ultimately, we just need really to see that the CAR is spread out toward the particular transaction cycle. So in a transaction cycle, no one department should control CAR. Next, we go to the responsibility of your auditor. So for the auditor, the first one, of course, is to obtain an understanding. And you already know that one. We need to obtain an understanding of the internal control or the controls in place. And once we um, obtain understanding, we test the reliability of this particular uh, internal control in the reporting or in the financial reporting. And ultimately, the fairness of presentation of the account balances affected by each transaction cycle. So how do we obtain an understanding again? We said we look into the different departments. We look into the activities or the documents. And um, whenever we look into those items, we look into the internal controls in place on those three items. So again, we look into the departments. We look into the uh, activities and then we look into the forms or the documents and we see if there is an internal control in place. So department, the different activities within the department and the different forms or documents. So we see if there is proper internal control in place. Okay, And take note, this internal control must be for the company or the entity to meet its financial reporting objective. Okay, do not forget that internal control must provide a reasonable assurance that the entity will meet its financial reporting objective. Therefore, as an auditor, we just obtain an understanding for this internal control and check whether really that internal control will meet the financial reporting objective of the entity. So how can we see that the internal control will meet the financial reporting objective of the entity if ever these two items are present? Okay, so let's start now. 